Hey, this is Anime Shark. Today I am doing a recap of Unbreakable Machine Doll. We're almost about 5,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing. The story begins. Raishin and Yaya are traveling by train to get to their destination, but the train malfunctions and fails to stop at the designated train station. Upon hearing the perilous situation the passengers are in, Raishin and Yaya take it upon themselves to save everyone by stopping the train using Yaya's brute strength, enhanced even more by Raishin's mana. After successfully saving everyone, they leave for Walpurgis Academy. After arriving at the academy, Raishin takes a transfer admission test, only to do poorly and receive a miserable ranking of 1,235th out of 1,000. 236 candidates. As Ration becomes depressed over his future prospects, Professor Kimberly appears before them and introduces that she is their teacher. As they discuss about the Walpurgis Night, a party where the top 100 students battle to be the wise men, Kimberly informs Ration that despite his poor grades, he can still gain access to the night party if he defeats any contestant within the 100 ranks and takes their place. She is, however, surprised at Raishin's determination to become the wise man and reminds him to work hard. While looking for their dormitory, Raishin and Yaya stumble across the girls' dorm, where they encounter Charlotte Ballou and her automaton dragon Sigmund. After an unpleasant first encounter with the two, they finally arrive at the male dormitory, Tortoise Hall. Settled down in his room, Raishin reflects on how he will need to use force to gain entry into the night party. The next morning, Charlotte and Sigmund take a walk around school, only to be met with terrified students who avoid their paths. Upon seeing this, Sigmund reminds Charlotte to make friends in lieu of the terrifying reputation she has in school, but she refuses to because she believes everyone is her opponent in the night party. Just then, Raishin and Yaya appear before them and challenge them to a duel, which Charlotte accepts while commenting that Raishin is a fool to do so. However, before their battle commences, Sigmund is assaulted by several other students and their automatons. Sigmund manages to take on the attackers until one automaton throws a powerful punch at him, causing Charlotte to fall from Sigmund's back. In the nick of time, she is saved by Raishin who catches her, while Yaya quickly blocks the attacking automaton with her fist. Undeterred by the threats of the attackers, Raishin refuses to back away from the battleground. The four of them then work together to defeat their attackers. Afterwards, Raishin decides to discontinue their original fight due to Sigmund's injuries. Later that night, a mysterious figure devours on something before leaping away, leaving behind a partly devoured automaton. The next day, as Raishin, Charlotte, and their respective automatons are having lunch together, Raishin unexpectedly spots Magnus taking a stroll with two of his automatons. Instantly, Raishin has flashbacks of his dead family members in a burning house. Intending to confront Magnus, Raishin orders Yaya to go out, which she does so by breaking through the glass window. As Raishin leaps out of the window, Charlotte tries to stop him, but to no avail. Knowing that he would lose in a battle given the extreme differences in skill level, Raishin gives Magnus a small jar instead of challenging him to a battle. Felix, the Discipline Committee Chief, engages Ration to eliminate an unknown entity known as Cannibal Candy, which has destroyed many automata and caused the disappearance of 26 students in exchange for an entry into the festival. Charlotte asks Ration to go on a date, and he accepts much to Yaya's dismay. On their date, Ration explains his background and that he only began studying two years ago, which explains his poor academic performance. Charlotte confesses to Raishin that she committed a terrible sin in the past. After the date, Raishin and Charlotte happen upon another cannibal candy crime scene. At the crime scene, Raishin and Charlotte run into Felix, who scares Charlotte away. Back at the dorms, Raishin gives Yaya a pair of boots and tells her that he went out with Charlotte to confirm that she is not cannibal candy. Raishin receives a phone call from Lisette, telling him that Charlotte is missing from her dorm. Shoko makes a visit to the dorms with Irori and Komurasaki. She tells Raishin that automatons are not humans and recalls the time she met Raishin. Lisette takes Raishin to an automaton laboratory. After Raishin deduces that Lisette was present at the scenes of the crimes, 
he discovers Lisette's preserved corpse in Felix's locker, and that the Lisette that he had been talking to is actually a banned automaton. Outside the laboratory, Charlotte defeats an automaton, but it is a trap set by Felix to frame her as cannibal candy, since a number of Eve's hearts were found in her dorm room. Charlotte figures out that Felix is cannibal candy and that he planned to have Ration eliminate her. Felix is about to kill Charlotte when an injured Ration and Yaya arrive. Ration and Yaya learn about Charlotte's past from Sigmund. Charlotte's family was distinguished for making automatons, but the family was stripped of everything when the young Prince of Wales was injured by one of her automata. Thus Charlotte attends school on a scholarship and is saving up to buy back the Eve's hearts from her family's automata and hopes to be reunited with her family someday. Lisette is revealed to be Felix's automaton, Eliza, who is capable of absorbing magic abilities from the automatons she devours. As she and Yaya fight, Eliza's body turns into mist trapping Yaya within. But with Yaya's blood spilling on Eliza, the effectiveness of Eliza's attacks decreases as only one type of magic can be utilized at a time, and she is destroyed. Following the battle, Ration is honored and granted entry into the festival, despite his poor grades, and Charlotte gives Ration a pendant with defensive capabilities as a gift for clearing her name. Ration and Yaya enter their dorm room and see Free caught in a trap that she had set for Ration. Later that day, Free builds another trap by building a cage only to become trapped in it herself. Her brother Loki arrives to warn Ration that puppeteers have taken notice of him for beating Felix and Eliza, and that it would be in his best interest to withdraw from the festival. Ration refuses. That night, Frey sneaks into Ration's bed in another assassination attempt, but falls asleep instead. The next day, Charlotte informs Ration about Divine Works, the shady automaton manufacturer that sponsors Loki and Free, and obtains magic circuit patents through bribery. Frey's automaton Rabbi goes rogue and attacks Ration, and is knocked unconscious by a stun grenade. Ration brings Kamurasaki with him on a reconnaissance mission to the orphanage Loki and Frey grew up in. As they wait, Yaya and Sigmund discuss what being human is all about, and Yaya is suddenly attacked. Yaya regains consciousness after being badly damaged by the attack, but is in need of repairs by an expert puppet maker. At the orphanage, Ration and Kamurasaki meet Yomi, the prototype automaton of the Garm series that is about to be disposed of. Yomi shows them around the orphanage, and they learn about Frey's background. They end up in a lab where illegal experiments on humans take place when the alarm sounds. Ration, Kamurasaki, and Yomi are pursued by the guards through the sewers, and Yomi tells them that if Frey loses during the festival, the Garm series of automata will be disposed of and replaced by the Angel series. Critically wounded after protecting Ration from gunfire, Yomi sacrifices herself to allow Ration and Kamurasaki to escape. Ration meets up with Shoko in his room, and she orders him to remove Rabi's magic circuit. The Walpurgis Night Festival begins with Ration battling Loki instead of Free. Ration is severely wounded after taking the hit from Cherubim in sword form to protect Yaya. With Ration lying unconscious, Loki, realizing that Yaya would fight back aggressively, walks away and opts not to take his glove. Loki is scorned by Bronson for dropping his rank from 7 to 99 to keep Frey out of the fight. Ration wakes up in the infirmary as the attack missed his vitals. Outside the infirmary, Loki and Frey fight each other. Rabi goes berserk and starts draining Frey's blood and absorbing its magical power. Just before Rabi hurts Loki, Ration intervenes and the two of them stop Rabi. Ration learns that Frey is a synthetic white medium, a child with great magic levels due to the artificial installation of a magical circuit in her heart. Ration and Yaya return to the orphanage only to find the Garm Automata have already been scrapped. They are ambushed and Loki arrives on the scene. Kimberly brings Frey and Charlotte to the orphanage to observe the fight. Ration and Loki battle Bronson's automaton, Lucifer, the latest model of the Angel Automata, who overwhelms Yaya and Cherubim. Bronson explains that he brought Frey and Loki from America to be test subjects for his experiments for the progress of mankind. 
By working together, Yaya and Cherubim destroy Lucifer as Cherubim engages him in direct combat while Yaya uses explosives hidden in her sleeves to disable his jet circuit. Bronson is about to shoot Ration and Loki, who have both collapsed from injuries, when Kimberly brings the Crusaders in to arrest Bronson for experimenting on children. Ration and Loki are brought to the infirmary where Yaya, intent on treating Ration herself, stirs up trouble. Ration notices a girl falling from the roof, and Yaya saves her, while Charlotte and Sigmund destroy the ac The girl whom Yaya saved is Charlotte's younger sister, Henriette, who has made several suicide attempts. Realizing that the attack on the clock tower contradicts Charlotte's nature, Ration goes searching for her. Cedric sends Charlotte to see Ration with a warning for him to stay away from Henriette. Frey locates Henriette with her automata just before she hangs herself. That night, Ration is ready to face the 87th ranked puppeteer who does not show up. Henriette makes another suicide attempt but is stopped by Charlotte. Ration learns from Kimberly that the Academy's headmaster Rutherford is being targeted and he deduces that the Kingsford family is involved. The next day, Ration spots Rutherford by the ruins of the clock tower and sends Yaya to contact Shoko. He sees Henriette headed towards the ruins, and when Sigmund unleashes a luster cannon attack, the ground underneath their feet collapses causing Ration and Henriette to fall. Yaya attempts to follow Ration, but is stopped by Kimberly who warns her that she is being watched. Shin escorts Charlotte back to Cedric, who lashes out at Charlotte with a roundabout approach of her assassination attempt. Ration and Henriette navigate underground, and while resting, they find common ground as both were considered to be inferior siblings. They later encounter Magnus and one of his automata who resembles Nade Shiko, as well as Rutherford. Shin attacks Ration, but Magnus's automaton intervenes and forces Shin to retreat. Back on the surface, Ration is reunited with Yaya. Back in the dorm, Ration tells Yaya that his late parents had arranged for a marriage for him. That night, Ration's opponent for the festival fails to show up for the third straight night, and he devises a plan to draw out the conspirators by kidnapping Henriette. Cedric orders Shin to retrieve Henriette and kill Ration, while Cedric tortures Charlotte as a way to satisfy Felix. Shin approaches Ration and engages him in battle. Shin wounds Ration but retreats due to the unexpected appearance of Loki and Free. Back at the infirmary, Henriette tells Ration that she is at fault for letting the automaton that attacked the Prince of Wales go rogue and also tells him that she had been trying to kill herself so that Charlotte would not be burdened with her life. Meanwhile, Sigmund begs Charlotte to stop the assassination and Ration arrives to tell her that killing Rutherford will make her dream of restoring her family status impossible. Unable to see things Ration's way, Sigmund and Yaya fight. Ration knocks Charlotte off Sigmund and finally convinces her to stop the assassination. Shin appears and calls himself a divine being called a machine doll for being able to operate without a puppeteer supplying magic. Shoko recalls the past when she gave Ration a new lease on life on the condition that he killed Tenzin or else she would use his body parts to build an automaton. Before Ration fights Shin, Charlotte tells Free the truth about her situation to keep Ration from putting himself in danger. During the battle, Ration gets Shin to attack from behind where Yaya is waiting for him. She slams Shin into a brick wall and repeatedly throws punches to immobilize him. Sigmund follows up by firing his luster cannon. Shin dodges the attack, thereby confirming the presence of his puppeteer as he could not have dodged the attack without a puppeteer resupplying him with magic. Frey locates Cedric and Yaya activates her final stronghold ability to defeat Shin. Cedric and Shin retreat, and Cedric reveals herself to be the 87th ranked puppeteer, Alice Bernstein. Having watched the battle from a distance, Kimberly warns Magnus that as Tenzin Akabane, he is being closely watched, and that manufacturing human life is magic's greatest taboo. The next day, Ration recovers in the infirmary, and the girls stir up a big commotion over Ration's presumed preference over girls with large breasts, which greatly upsets Charlotte. Kimberly drops by to inform Ration that the clock tower will be rebuilt using the Baloo family fortune that was confiscated and frozen following the incident, and that Henriette's enrollment has been voided, but that she will remain at the academy as Cruel's lab assistant. After everybody but Yaya leaves, 
Yaya expresses her concern about having to face her friends, but Raishin maintains his optimism, which Yaya interprets as a declaration of love.